Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in and welcome back to Sewing Clara. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to make a racer back tank top with an integrated sports bra. I recently created the sewing pattern for these tops and I posted it on my homepage, which is linked down below and I also blend it in here on the screen and I thought I should definitely film a tutorial for you guys. So I made one of the tank tops of this camouflage jersey. The next tank top that I made is made of this beautiful skull and flower print and the last one is a little bit fancier. I have used stretchy lace and there is a little difference between how I made the camouflage tank top and between how I made these two but it will be all explained in our today's video. So if that's something you're interested in then please keep watching. Here we have all the parts for our today's project. So on the left side here on the top with the camouflage print, that's the front part of the tank top and next to it on the right side is the back part. Here below we have the parts for the integrated bra and the elastic band and I have here two yarns. I have decided to sew the entire project with a brown yarn that matches the brown color in the camouflage print and for the elastic I have here a white yarn. As a first step I will pin together these sides of the bra part. I will make sure that the right side is going to be inside. So right now the way the back part is here the right side is up, the wrong side is on the bottom. So I will place this piece on it with the wrong side up and I will align here the sides and I will start pinning them at an angle. Now I will go to my sewing machine and I will sew these sides together with overlock stitch. Before I do that though I will also pin together the tank top part. So again this is the back part. You can clearly see since this has a print that the right side is facing up. I will place the front part on it so that the right side is now facing down and we see the wrong side and I will also start pinning the sides. I will place the pins at an angle and when I will be done I will also sew these sides together with stretchy overlock stitch and then we'll take it from there. A little side note I could also sew this together with white yarn since the wrong side of this fabric with the camouflage print is white. All right so I have sewn together the main parts on the sides and the parts for the integrated bra. I have also sewn together the elastic band that I will later sew on the integrated bra but first I wanted to show you something. So when I was sewing these pieces together which I by the way ended up sewing with white yarn because it simply does look better from the inside. There were a few stitches missing and that was because the needle that I was using was not ideal for this fabric. So I originally started using one of these stretch needles but I ended up swapping to microtextile needles. They are thinner and pointier and then I got a much better result. No stitches were missing and the needle simply went through the fabric like through butter. Personally, whenever I'm using the overlock stitch and whenever I'm working with very stretchy fabrics, just like this one, I like sewing a little bit further from the edge. That's why I had to cut back the excess fabric. And that's what we're gonna do now here on the integrated bra part. It's just a tiny part, but it ends up looking much better. Now I will grab the pieces for the sports bra. I already turned them to the right side and I folded them so that the side seams would be aligned and I made a little cut here 
on the back and also on the front. Both these cuts mark the center of each part. Then I grab the elastic band. I want the section that has been sewn together in the back, in the center, so I folded it like so and I put a pin in it and now I know where the center is. And now I can grab this and I will start pinning the elastic to the bottom. So I will make sure that the center of the back is aligned with the center of the top, but actually I'm gonna pin in from the inside where I have the fabric, uh, the, the fabric for the sports bra. Let me align this as well here with the front part. As always, I'll put in pins at right angle and I will make sure that the side seams are facing, let's say, to the front. Because on the tank top, I will make them face to the back and that way they will be nicely spread that I won't end up sewing through too much fabric once I will be putting all the sections together. So I'll put in a few more pins around the edge. And now that the elastic band has been pinned in place, I can go to my sewing machine. I will make sure that I will use this fabric for this, uh, this fabric, this sewing yarn for this side and for the bottom, that means on the bobbin, I'll have white yarn because that way it looks prettier. So I actually forgot to tell you that I ended up using a third yarn exactly in the same color like this fabric. Here is what it looks like so far. So I have sewn the elastic on with overlock stitch, then I folded it downwards and uh, I have sewn through with stretches zigzag. This is my favorite stitch for these type of projects because it allows the fabric to stretch out enough without the danger of the yarn tearing later. Obviously, if you had a serger um, and if you had, um, or like a cover lock, if you had one of these stitches where you would have two rows of a straight stitch and on the back side a cover stitch, of course it would be prettier. But for all those of us who have just a normal sewing machine, this is a perfect solution. Before we put these two pieces together, I also like aligning the bottom of the main part of the tank top like so. And I like making sure that here where we have the side seam that it doesn't make a pointy end and it does and I don't like that. So I will align these seams and I will put a pin a little bit further from the edge. I will also put a pin somewhere here and I will smoothen this and make sure that both edges are aligned nicely. And I'll put in pins a bit further from the edge because I want to cut it back a little bit to make sure that we'll have a nice line on the bottom. So I'm going to turn my work a little bit. This looks good. So I'll go in with my scissors and I'll start cutting. And I will make sure that I'll get rid of this, this pointy part and that it connects nicely with the back line. Doesn't that look much better? Since I'm gonna be only folding this once inwards, if you wanted to, you could also grab zigzag scissors and simply cut this with zigzag scissors because it just looks pretty. And the sound is like I'm chewing the table. And when you fold this inwards, it is a nice effect. And you know what, since we are already at the bottom, let's start folding this inward. So this is the amount I want to fold it in. I will later put in pins at an angle, but for now, I'm just going to put them in like so. And what I like doing is once I decided on how much I want to fold it in, I always like grabbing my work and comparing a few sections so that I can make sure that I folded the entire edge exactly the same amount. The 
way I designed the pattern is that the front is a little bit shorter and the back is a little bit longer and rounded. That's especially great if you have a round butt. Whenever I see pieces that have the same length in the front, I can already tell it's not gonna fit me. So this is a perfect way how to make it a little bit more ergonomic. So now that I have folded everything the same amount, I measured it on several places and I'm super happy with the result, even though this one is a little bit too much, but that's okay now. Um, I'll grab my pins again and I will start putting them in at an angle like so. Here is what it looks like and now I can go ahead and sew around the edge. Again, when it comes to the thread, um, that's pretty much your choice with a pattern like that. I personally find that it's always best to see what's the most dominant color if you want to have the seams rather subtle. If you don't mind having a contrast effect, you can go simply with a color that matches any of the remaining tones in the print. And for me personally, I decided to go with brown. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna be sewing through with this stretchy zigzag and I'll be sewing close to the edge. So uh, to this edge, to the edge that I cut back with zigzag scissors. So basically a bit further from the bottom edge of the top. So let's do that. All right, so here is what our piece looks like so far. So the side seams are done. I have etched the bottom with the stretchy zigzag. I personally like the brown yarn, but that's of course, again, up to you. If you want to have something rather subtle, always go for the most dominant color in the pattern if you are using fabric with pattern. And I'm gonna place the top like so. I'm gonna grab our integrated bra and I'm gonna turn it to the wrong side and I'm going to pull it over the tank top like so. Now I will grab my pins and I will start pinning the integrated bra to the main part. So the first step is to turn my work around like so. And if you remember, I told you that when I was sewing on the elastic on the integrated bra, I folded the side seam to the front. And I might have mentioned that I wanted to fold the seam on the main part to the back. And that's really important here because when I align these two pieces, if the seams would be facing the same side, I would he have here a section with too much fabric that would be overlapping. So that's why it's much better. You can see now how I nicely divided the seam from the bra folded forwards, the seam backwards and it's just much flatter on the side. So I'm gonna start putting pins in at an angle from the inside and I will make sure that I pin first the armholes towards the straps and I will leave out that much at the end, which is basically the seam allowance. It will all make sense later. So let's pin first the armholes all the way from the front towards the back. Here is what it looks like. And now I will also pin around the necklines, both back and front. Same principle, I will be pinning at an angle. Now I will go to my sewing machine. Again, I will leave out that much at the end and I will sew around all these edges with simply a regular straight stitch. I'll be sewing from the inside where I position the pins. From this side, that means the top yarn will be a white yarn and for the bottom, I'm gonna use this beige yarn so that it would match this fabric. The pieces have been sewn together. Important thing is that when you align these ends, 
that the distance between the seams is the same on both the front and the back part and they align perfectly so I'm happy with the result. Before we go on I will grab my scissors and I will start cutting out little triangles around the round edges because when we turn this to the right side if I wouldn't cut these out there would be a lot of fabric crunched together and the line would simply not look good. This is something you always have to do when you are lining around edges it always makes a much nicer result. All right, so this is what it looks like when I cut out the little triangles everywhere where the pieces are rounded. The next step is to turn this to the right side. So I like always pulling my finger here through and folding it over like so. I'll do the same here and in the back. Now that I turned the piece to the right side, when you look inside it looks really pretty. The right side of the bra is visible this way. And now we have to start sewing together the straps. So I'll turn the whole piece to the wrong side. This is my favorite way of how to do that. And I will grab here the end of the beige section, the section of the integrated bra and I will pin it in place like so from both sides basically what I want is that it's not gonna get in the way and I'll do the same here on the other strap important is that you align here the edge nicely first and then fold this over pin it in place and you will end up with two sides where, okay this is maybe not such a good idea, with two sides where you will be able to align simply only the ends that are made of the camouflage fabric. So I will make sure that when I align it that there will be no parts sticking out. So at this point I'll grab my pins and pin it together like so at an angle. And I honestly think that for this part of this project it's actually not bad using a zipper foot because then you can get closer to the seam because this is pretty thick without going over it with your sewing foot and it's easier to sew through because you want to be sewing exactly here very close to where the fold starts. And I'll do that simply with a straight stitch. So first I'll pin of course also the other side together and then I'll show you the result. I zoomed in so that you can see it a little bit closer. So here on this side when I was sewing around the edges I stopped sewing a little bit further from the end which is even better because then I can use the regular sewing foot. So I will put it in my sewing machine like so. So here will be the right edge of my sewing foot and I will sew as far as the seam allowances again with simply a straight stitch and then we'll take it from there. I have sewn the camouflage sides together and I have folded the still open parts inward so I'm gonna open it so that you can see it. So once this has been sewn together I spread the stitch so that the seam allowance would be facing towards both sides. And now I still have here these open ends. I folded them inwards exactly the amount that's the seam allowance. So basically the edge will be aligned with the center where the seam is on the camouflaged fabric. So I'm gonna put in pins like so and I'll do the same here on the top and important is that you tuck everything nicely in so that nothing is sticking out. You just have to play with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and here's what it looks like. So when I turn the piece to the right side, I already pinned around the remaining edges. Here is what the tank top is gonna look like. I will simply sew around the edge with a straight stitch, but before I do that, I wanna close these parts that are still open. And for that, I have threaded my needle with the bash yarn, and I will stitch this, hand sew this together with the so-called leather stitch. If you are not familiar with hand sewing, which is actually a very important part of sewing, even if you're working just with a sewing machine, I have plenty of tutorials. And in one of the tutorial, I have shown how to do the leather stitch. So I will link the video here in the right corner and also in the video description. So I'll do this quickly and then I will sew around the neckline and the armholes with a straight stitch once I close this with a letter stitch. And this is the result. Since I have been sewing around the edge with brown thread from this side, from the top, I made sure that I always started sewing somewhere where there was a brown section when I did the sew up on the sewing machine. And then I simply continued around the neckline and the armholes. So here is what it looks like from the front. And here we have the back. When I open it, you can clearly see the integrated bra. And here we have the bottom edge. I personally absolutely love tops like that, that have an integrated sports bra. I appreciate the double layer, especially here in the front. That way I never end up having an awkward situation, if you know what I mean. And I can only imagine that anyone with larger boobs will love the extra support that this top will give them without the need for a bra underneath. This is made of cotton jersey with spandex, but you could of course use any stretchy functional fabric. So that way you can make yourself amazing gym clothes. I made two more tank tops with this sewing pattern. So one is made of this beautiful print with skulls and flowers. And for the lining, I have used orange jersey, but this is made a little bit differently. Same principle, same sewing pattern, but the integrated bra is simply sewn in place without having an elastic band on the bottom. So this tank top doesn't give me as much support as the camouflage tank top would, but I still benefit from the double layer. So I'm gonna turn it to the wrong side so that you can see what it looks like from the inside. So it's the same principle, same sewing pattern, only this time instead of sewing on an elastic band, I added one additional inch seam allowance on the bottom and I have simply pinned the fabric after the pieces have been sewn in in place to the main fabric and I have sewn it in place with stretches zigzag. So again, this is not so much support, but it's still nice because it adds an extra layer over my chest. I also made this blue lace tank top. So the main fabric is stretchy lace and for the lining, I have used the same light beige jersey that I have used for my camouflage tank top, but just like with this skull print tank top, the lining is there only for the extra layer of fabric. So I have sewn it in and I haven't used an elastic band on the bottom. And since this shade is quite similar to my skin tone, when I have this on, it kind of gives me the nude look uh, because you can't really tell where the lining ends and my skin starts. So if that's what you're going for, definitely go ahead and look for a shade of jersey that would go with your personal skin tone.
and that is it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed our today's video. If you're gonna make your own Razorback tank top and if you plan on posting photos on Instagram, don't forget to tag me. I love seeing your work. It's always a pleasure. My Instagram account is linked down below. And the sewing pattern is available for a very affordable price on my homepage. I will blend the homepage in here. And it's of course also linked in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so, so much. God bless you and see you with my next project. Bye. What?